Yo, what is good boys? It's Relic. Welcome to Wave Ninja. Today, I'm going to be doing a video on my Ableton template because the last time I did a video on my Ableton template was, I think, like one or two years ago, and I've actually changed quite a bit since then. It's roughly the same in a lot of areas, but I've also changed a lot too, and I tend to get a lot of questions on my older video, but um, I don't do a lot of the techniques that I used to. So I'm going to kind of give you an updated version of my Ableton template and kind of give you a rundown of everything. So yeah, without further ado, let's just get into it. So before I get into all the like channels and all that, I'm going to show you my... Uh, uh, theme because I get a lot of questions on that and really if you just go to look and feel in the preferences in in the like lower section you'll see the dark theme which is what I have it set as but I have the brightness at 100 the color intensity at 66% and the color hue at 220 and it kind of just gives it a little bit of a blue tint to it like if you see I just take it off it's like just gray and uh, I don't know I just think the blue tint kind of just gives it a, just a little bit of like e easiness on the eyes I don't even know <laughs> like why I struggle saying that but yeah it just makes it a little easier on the eyes for me personally I think it just looks nicer all around usually it's pretty extreme if you change it to any other intensity it's just like too much for me I think I think 220 is just like the perfect color because it's not really like overwhelming or anything like that so yeah that's that's what I got going and another thing is I don't use sends and returns so um, I tend to use audio racks for pretty much anything involving like parallel processing and or like processing in series and stuff like that so I basically have four main groups effects synths drums and bass and all the channels are kind of colored based off of what frequency spectrum they take up so the blue is kind of like the mid-range frequency the cyan colors are kind of like the high end uh, kicks and sub is um, the low end so it'd be like purple and then the white is just like um, my drum rack for like everything which I'll get into in a second but I'm just gonna kind of give a rundown of my effects first so in my effects, I have one, two, three, four, five channels. Usually I tend to put like Foley in here, whooshes, risers, stuff like that. And then obviously I have my tag, which is already in there, just like deactivated. So all I have to do is hit zero and it's right there. Relic. Sync to tempo and everything. It's on Complex Pro, so it just makes it sound good uh, no matter what I stretch it to. So usually I just keep that off. And then if I need it for whatever thing I'm working on, then I'll just hit zero and turn it on. And then on that, it just has a little delay if I want to automate the delay. Let me see if I can do it real quick. So I would just hit A to turn automation on, and then I would just add a little on right here. Relic, 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 relic. And this is just OTT, EQ, and reverb, and a delay. Yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Um, riser and all that are just regular channels. I don't really do anything special with that. I think I do have a chain shaper on this, which is how I do my side chaining these days. It basically is all side chaining to the kick and I have it set on wide and I basically just do a tiny bit of side chaining. So you can't really hear it in the mix. It just sounds super transparent and I don't have it side chaining all the way. I have it at 90%, um, which I have on pretty much all my channels that are not drums essentially, which I think makes it sound a little bit cleaner and I can push everything a little bit further without you realizing it. So yeah, there's the effects for my synths. I have Chain Shaper again, a little bit more of a side chain to it. And then I have this little rack right here, which is just multi-band compression, really. It is a multi-band compression preset in the multi-band dynamics. Um, I think it's this one right here. And I have it to set to 75%. And then I also have an OTT at 20%. And honestly, I don't know why I do this. I think it just sounds better in like the mid range. It brings out the tails of like reverbs and stuff like that. I used to have it on my master channel, which I think is pretty bad practice, but it sounded good at the time. Now I just tend to have it on my synths. So everything is a little less processed in the end. What else do I have in here? I have a piano, which is just contact five. I think I'm using Alicia's keys, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and this is just to get ideas down. This is what I have it um, open up to. So it just makes it really easy to get ideas down pretty much and then usually I do I have um, three other MIDI channels and this is just to add other elements and stuff like that I think palace was saying when he makes loops he usually uses four elements and I usually try to stick to that sometimes I go over when adding like accents and little percussion and stuff like that but I think four is a pretty good rounded amount of elements to have in a loop that you're making uh, so I tend to keep it like that and if I need to add more then I can always just add audio or 
MIDI uh, tracks. For the drum group, I don't have anything on the actual drum group. For cymbals, I have a chain shaper as well because it sometimes clashes with the kick and I don't like the clippingness of it, so uh, I just have it on there. I have a hi-hat on its own MIDI channel because I like to transpose it because it's a pretty normal thing in trap music, so I usually just put it on its own channel. I have EQ on the percussion, let's see, a saturator on the snare, and a camel crusher that's off on uh, my kick channel. And that is basically on the, what is it, the British Clean preset with the mix pretty low. It's kind of if you want to emulate like a soft clipping kind of sound, that's kind of what I go for. As far as this, this is just a utility and it is a, like a reverse polarity. So um, sometimes your kick in your 808 will be clashing or it'll lose power. So sometimes just flipping the polarity can kind of help out with that. For all that stuff, I put it in a drum rack on one channel because I have a Ableton push, which I have down here. I don't know if you can see it on video on video. Oh, running out of breath. Uh, yeah, but I have it down here and I like being able to do it all on the same track. So I just have it all here and then I route them, I route them to each individual channel just to make it a little bit easier for me to write so I don't have to go to every channel to do MIDI for it. And I think the only way to do this is you have to put it in here, make it audio channel, hit tab and go into the like session view. And then I would go to kick and then you can see you would do audio from drum kit and then you would do the post effects of the drum rack. So I have the kick post effect drum rack right here. And then I do the same for the snare and so on and so forth. So I could still mix them as if they're on separate channels, but I have the glory of uh, putting them all in the same drum rack too. So it's pretty awesome. And then the last thing I have is my bass channel on the actual bass channel. I have a chain shaper at like 60%. I have an auto filter, which honestly, I don't know why this is there. I could probably take that off. And then I have a multiband compression just because I like it bringing out the mid range just a little bit more. I think it sounds really good and it doesn't uh, take away from the low end. So that's really cool too. As far as my subgroup, which is where I put my 808s usually, I have a tuner just to make sure that I have everything in tune or in key to the song. I also have a saturator at 50% on the soft sign setting and the soft clip on, but all these are off. So usually I'll like put them on if I need to. Sometimes, most of the time I really don't use these, but every once in a while when I'm doing like 808 processing, I'll add these and maybe decapitator and stuff like that. I have another multiband compression just because I really like multiband compression. Apparently it just makes it sound really good. And I have an EQ8 just in case if there's a little too much buzziness, I can just take off some of the high end or I don't know, whatever you do with an EQ, honestly, there's no limits to it really. And the last thing is my master channel. And the master channel is pretty cool. So I'm just going to go over BIP first, which is a, what is it? It's pretty much a Max for Live plugin that allows you to bounce in place. And then basically what I do is I hit control K and you can assign key keys to each individual one of these and I assign it to the top one and I assigned it to J which is um, like if you want to consolidate you would hit control J so I figured J would be a really good button to assign it to when I want to bounce in place and basically what it allows you to do is well, let me go back and when I hit J it basically create it'll create an audio track it'll assign it to resampling it'll arm it and then it'll hit record and then it'll start resampling out whatever I have so let me show you it in action so if I wanted to resample out my 808 for whatever reason say I made a new one I could just hit J and it'll solo it out make a new channel start recording and then whenever I want to stop I'll stop it so that way I don't have to do the whole process of that it just automatically does it for me and it makes it super easy especially because I make a lot of sounds and drum kits and stuff like that it is just super convenient if you definitely do like resampling and stuff like that I would recommend you get that I think it's like three or four bucks and as far as the chain shaper I think that's like 30 for this I have an audio effect rack it's just a utility basically to to allow me to automate the volume at the end of my songs usually is when I use it. And then as for my actual limiter, I use um, invisible limiter. If you haven't seen my other videos, I have it set to low and I have the clip overshoot and then I have it uh, set to minus 0.3 for the compression. Like basically sometimes when you export it out and convert it to something else, like a different format, that extra minus 0.3 will make sure that it doesn't clip and sound gross on certain systems, which I think will work out. Um, I've been doing less and less compression and limiting lately. In fact, I'll probably change it to three at some point soon. I also have a Swiss army meter, which kind of shows you 
you all the LUFS and all the loudness metering and stuff like that. It also gives you milliseconds based off of your BPM, which is really cool. So I can do reverb times and I can basically choose how many milliseconds I want for specific things like an 808. If I wanted to be in exa exactly a bar, I could do 1714. And then as I change the tempo, it'll change the notes, which is awesome. But yeah, I'll just leave the links in the description for you guys to download all these if you want. Some of these cost money, but they're actually pretty affordable in my opinion. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, let me know what you want to see next. If you want to see more Ableton stuff, um, I'm going to be doing more cookups, obviously, and I'm, I'm streaming on Twitch more often lately. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.